The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Thank you, uh, Dr. Chan Mais, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, yeah, today I'm going to talk about overview of Today I'm going to talk about overviews of uh, factors influence on concrete uh, modulus of uh, elasticity. So this one is showing that uh, the outline of my presentation. Uh, first, I'm to talk about uh, you know the factors that including uh, microstructures, uh, macrostructures, modulus, mixture composition, rheology, workability and very briefly about the mixing, placement, consolidation, curing, and testing procedures. I'm sure that the last one, we have also other speakers going to talk about that. Okay. And I'm going also very brief about the example of project uh, with uh, high MOE requirements that including Trump Tower in Chicago, New World Trade Center in Newark, or 432 Park Avenue, super tall apartment building in Newark, and 36 story high rise buildings uh, apartment in Tower, a uh, tower in, uh, Ma in uh, Minnesota. And also I will uh, talk about the ultra high performance concrete, SEC concrete for tall structures that we develop at a uh, BAF uh, uh, laboratory. So uh, yeah, we well know that, uh, uh, what is that uh, uh, MOE? MOE is by definition is stress over strength. And you can see here that in the graph on the right side, uh, we have a two line. One line is that in, uh, in a brown color, and the other one is that in green color. You can see that they both can have uh, the same strength, but they can have a different MOE, as you can see here. And uh, per ASTM standard C469, uh, stress apply up to 40% of ultimate strength. So, as uh, uh, Robert uh, Rob already talked, that is the strength is not only one aspect. MOE is not uh, always the same as uh, strength. So, uh, yeah, let me talk. Start with first the factor is uh, the pace. Very simple. Denser and more uniform pace led to higher MOE. The second, cost and fire aggregate. Lower porosity of aggregate led to higher MOE. Rough surface areas, rough surface of, uh, of aggregate getting a better bonding and uh, with pace and therefore it led to the higher MOE. Also important is that interface between pace and aggregate. Better interface, better bonding and can lead to a higher MOE. That is the basic how to achieve high uh, Regarding the material and composition, the density and microstructure of the pit influenced by the air contents. Lower air, we get higher MOE. Water and water uh, to cement material, when you have low water and low water to cement material, we get a higher MOE. The hydration and fillingability among cement detailed materials, like a cement, slag, fly ash, silica foam. That, if you can achieve that, you can have a good MOE. Therefore, we need to achieve good properties and seal time of proportion among cement detailed materials. The, uh, the admixtures, such as super plasticizer or strand enhancing admixture, can enhance in reducing water to cement materials, therefore can enhance the dense microstructure and higher strength, therefore you can get a higher MOE. Regarding the cost and fire aggregate, higher density of aggregate enhance higher MOE. 
crash aggregate typically is better than raw aggregate in MOE enhancements. Regarding the interface between pace and aggregate, influenced by the pace quality, the survey characteristic of aggregate, especially cost aggregate, and then the degree of consolidation is very important, and the curing procedure, because if you don't have the right curing procedure, it can influence on the microstructure, especially the interface between uh, aggregate and cement. Uh, regarding rheology, uh, we know that with uh, uh, too low viscosity, get a high risk of the segregation and then can lead to non-uniform distribution of aggregate and low MOE. And too high viscosity, it very clearly that it very making difficulty in consolidation, make it de less than concrete, and more void and poor interface. Therefore, it can lead to a low MOE. Too high stress can lead to a poor workability, therefore can be uh, uh, le lead to a poor consolidation. And of course, then uh, uh, MOE can be very... So regarding the workability, yeah, we know that the workability enhances uniform distribution among five particles. So, and then enhance better hydration, better filling ability among particles, and therefore you get higher MOE. Good community can enhance better consolidation, therefore we get a better MOE. <coughs> and the mixture optimization, chemical admixture can enhance good workability, then pass with good interface and strength increase, therefore we can increase higher MOE. The material like a highly worked up concrete and HCC are excellent material to achieve high and ultra high MOE. Later on, we see that the example I'm going to talk about is clearly showing that we have a highly workable concrete or SEC. We will have very good results. If we, we execute it, everything is good from the design to the film. Other factors like a mixer type, mixing, proce uh, mixing procedures, high shear mixer can produce less viscous concrete and more uniform distribution of fine particles inside the concrete. Therefore, enhance a good filling and have a good hydration. Placement, continuous uh, placement, you know, if you have continuous placement, less cone joints, and then, of course, then a MOE could be, could be higher. The consideration need to be sufficient to make sure you have less void, then we can have a higher MOE. Curing, as I mentioned before, can affect microstructure and metric uh, surface. Therefore, it also influences on the MOE. And uh, we have one speaker going to talk about the testing, uh, like example preparation, such as riding egg, riding surface, sp uh, of specimen, influence MOE. Testing procedure, also important. How about specimen alignment? How about the testing rate, also important. So, uh, okay, let me uh, very brief uh, about example project with uh, high MOE requirements. Uh, one of uh, several of them already, uh, you know, uh, presented by uh, uh, Robert. So I'm not going very much in it, but in short that uh, for Trump Tower in Chicago, we can achieve very high uh, MOE yeah, with uh, 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 it from 6,200 uh, uh, KSI to 7,200 KSI. And of course, all the requirements need to meet, otherwise it, it can be, cannot be constructed well. Okay? And this one is picture showing that how is that uh, the Met Foundation uh, when it was there back to September, uh, 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 2005. So you can see that it's SEC and have a very good uh, segregation resistance. And interesting here is that we're using the conveyor, you know, to transport, uh, to, to make the, sorry, trans, uh, place, uh, placement of the SEC. And usually 32 trucks go into in one conveyor and from conveyor go into the MAT Foundation. It, and it is the SEC. Okay. Okay, uh, 
Jeju project is in a, a, it's a new world trade center in New York. In this case, uh, the requirement is uh, from 6,400 PSI up to uh, 7,000 uh, uh, KSI, I'm sorry, KSI. And of course, there's all the requirement we need to achieve. Uh, and that is sometimes very challenging for a concrete producer. But in this case, that uh, the US concrete did a very good job. And you can see here, in this case, that for them, for the 14,000 uh, 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 PSI green sand concrete, uh, the US concrete can achieve uh, uh, 7,990 uh, okay, 7, KSI. Uh, in the laboratory, but actually in the field, when you get the, the cylinder from the field, testing in laboratory, right, it can achieve 8,350 KSI. And the, you can see that in, uh, in the table that we developed in a laboratory together with uh, uh, US concrete. One is a design, the other one is we test it, and at uh, 56 days for complete strength, and then the other one, we have 56 days uh, uh, of uh, uh, MOE. You can see that we only achieve uh, better uh, uh, than the, the desire as needed. Uh, the other project, is, so it is a super tall apartment buildings. In this one, so because of the color, need to be up white. We use, instead of silica foam, we use a meta kaolin. And as you can see here that the MOE, we can achieve up to 7.7 .7 million PSI at 56 days. And the table showing that what we are testing in laboratory before actually that we uh, uh, do uh, uh, in the field. And uh, I can see that the form of finish was very good. And this one is really a tall apartment uh, in uh, New York. Uh, this one here also interesting is 36 story high rise uh, apartment uh, tower in uh, Minnesota. The reason I present this one, because in this one we do not use silica foam or we do not use slack. We use flash. Okay, we use flash. And this one is not completely SEC, it's highly opaque concrete. It's a slum flow from 18 inches to 23 inches. So you can see that uh, MOE requirement here is that from uh, 5,150 KSI up to uh, 6,300 KSI. And in this case, that is specified at 28 days. And the table showing us the data that we tested in uh, a laboratory to have uh, 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 um, uh, concrete producers, in this case, is a Samstone concrete product to achieve, and uh, it is very easy to work with, and very good placement, so on, so on. Remember, this one, we don't need to have silica foam, and we don't have slack. And by the way, that the one that I talk here, everything here is that we're using <coughs> conventional concrete materials. There's no special materials, okay? That is the real is the requirement we need to in all projects that I'm talking today. Okay, the other one project is really that also interesting. We get a, a request from a several uh, concrete producer ask us that how high can we go with really that conventional concrete materials? And so we can see here that the highest one so far we achieve is about nine uh, million PSI, okay? And strength we achieve about, you know, 23,000 uh, PSI at uh, 90 days. Of course, also there's all the requirements. So when we, we, we test it, we achieve about nine million PSI. We really a little bit dark. Okay, we got to use in conventional concrete material. How can we achieve that high? We have to check if that the testing equipment we do is right. So we have to cut, we have to have a cylinder made of steel where we know that the MOE we will know. And it's showing that, yeah, the equipment we have works good, we can do that. 
And then we also try to see what happened. If we take out the, uh, the quarter grid, uh, we can see that with mortar only, exactly the same, we take out the, the quarter grid, the mortar can have a 7.6 uh, million uh, PSI. And the next step is that we try to take out all aggregate, okay, the base only. We have to achieve about 5 million PSI uh, at uh, 90 days. So you can see that my two is the one who have to make sure they have good base, that we have a good cost aggregate, and then we have to make sure that we have interface, must be good. And that we need, when we work on that, we, we get there. So. <coughs> Uh, let me to make a summary. Okay. Uh, concrete modular stability is influenced by a number of factors, such as micro or structures, properties of pace, aggregate, and interface between aggregate and pace. Mixture optimization and selection of concrete materials, rheology workability, mixer efficiency, mixing procedure, placement, consolidation, and curing. And of course, also specimen preparation, specimen alignment, and testing procedures. The implementation of actual projects shows that high or ultra high MOE can be achieved when concrete mixtures are carefully designed, produced, and executed with the consideration of all above factors. So when we combine together, we will achieve what we want to. Thank you very much for your attention.